Hi everyone, welcome to Bite Size Med, where we talk about quick, bite-sized concepts and basic medical sciences for study and rapid review. In this video, I've put together some equations from respiratory physiology. So I like to call this my equation chain link. We're going to link each equation to the next. Let's start with compliance. That's the easiest one. So lung compliance is the change in volume over the change in pressure. In respiratory physiology, there are three kinds of pressures, alveolar pressure, pleural pressure, and transpulmonary pressure. Transpulmonary pressure is the difference between alveolar and pleural pressure. There are three pressures, but there are four volumes and four capacities. The volumes are the inspiratory reserve volume, the tidal volume, the expiratory reserve volume, and the residual volume. The capacities are the sum of volumes. So the first two, that's the inspiratory reserve volume and the tidal volume, is the inspiratory capacity. Add the expiratory reserve volume to that and we get the vital capacity. Take just the ERV and add the residual volume and you get the functional residual capacity. Put all of them together and you get the total lung capacity. So that's the IRV, the tidal volume, the ERV, and the residual volume. Let's pick up the tidal volume now. The tidal volume multiplied by the respiratory rate gives us the pulmonary or the minute ventilation rate. From this, if we remove the dead space, then we get the alveolar ventilation rate. So it's the difference between the tidal volume, the dead space volume, into the rate of respiration. The physiological dead space is the tidal volume multiplied by the difference between arterial and expired carbon dioxide over arterial carbon dioxide. Alveolar carbon dioxide and so arterial carbon dioxide can be predicted with the alveolar ventilation equation, which is that alveolar carbon dioxide is the rate of carbon dioxide produced into K, which is a constant, over the alveolar ventilation rate. Oxygen can be determined from the carbon dioxide using the alveolar gas equation. It's that alveolar oxygen is equal to the fraction of oxygen in inspired air into the difference between atmospheric pressure and water vapor pressure minus the alveolar carbon dioxide over the respiratory quotient. This respiratory quotient is the ratio of carbon dioxide produced to oxygen consumed. And it's normally 0.8. The difference between alveolar and arterial oxygen is called the alveolar arterial gradient. That's the AA gradient. In blood, oxygen can be dissolved or bound. The bound portion is to hemoglobin, and the oxygen binding capacity of blood is how much oxygen can bind to hemoglobin, which is normally 1.34 ml for 1 gram of hemoglobin, into the hemoglobin concentration into the saturation. The oxygen content of blood is the total oxygen in blood, so it's the binding capacity along with the dissolved oxygen. That's 1.34 into the hemoglobin concentration into the saturation plus the partial pressure of oxygen into 0 0.003. That's the solubility of oxygen. The oxygen delivery to the tissues is how much oxygen gets to the tissues. So it's the whole oxygen content of blood into the flow, and that's the cardiac output. Oxygen, carbon dioxide, and all these gases, they move by diffusion. The diffusion of a gas depends upon the change in pressure, the cross-sectional area, the solubility, the distance that the gas has to travel, and the square root of the molecular weight. The change in pressure is the pressure gradient, and it's a partial pressure gradient. This is Fick's law of diffusion. Henry's law is for the concentration of a dissolved gas. That's the partial pressure of the gas into the solubility coefficient. So all of this was about the ventilation portion in the lungs. But the lungs also have circulation, and that has its own physiology too. The resistance of vessels is 8 eta L over pi r to the power of 4. Eta is the viscosity, L is the length, and r is the radius of the vessels. 
So it's the same as vessels elsewhere. And the same formula is also applicable to resistance in the airways. Pulmonary vascular resistance is the difference between the pressure in the pulmonary artery and the pressure in the left atrium over the cardiac output. That's because resistance is change in pressure over flow. Lastly, the pH of blood. Don't forget the role that the lungs have in acid-base balance. That's the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. pH equals pK plus log of the bicarb concentration over 0 0.03 into the partial pressure of carbon dioxide. So that's just my way of putting them all together. A couple of things that I have used to remember equations is one, you can use flashcards. You could also write down a list on the back of your notebook. And most importantly, practice a few problems so you'll get used to these equations. It's one of the really good things to quickly scan through on the day before your exam, so you can try and put them together somewhere. If you would like more videos like this, please let me know in the comment section below. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.